The internet's been going crazy over two new humanoid clips, and honestly, it's easy to see why. Tesla just showed Optimus pulling off kung fu moves that actually look smooth this time, while Unitree's G1 is out here getting shoved, kicked, and standing right back up like nothing happened. Both look real, both look wild, and both say a lot about where humanoids are headed. So in this video, we're putting them head to head, breaking down the viral clips, their progress, and what each one can really do right now. By the end, I'll share who I think wins overall, and you can decide for yourself too. So let's talk about it. All right, Tesla's latest demo showed something that looked much closer to real-time behavior than the older sped up videos. The robot mirrored a human partner, entered a stance, and started responding to attacks with visible coordination between its upper body and legs. It wasn't flawless, but it was fluid. The balance corrections were smaller and the steps more deliberate. This was Optimus learning control through motion, powered entirely by onboard AI, not a remote operator hiding behind the curtain. That's important because it means the robot is generating its own decisions from sensor data, not replaying a script. The clip started simple, small movements, slow transitions, basic footwork, then built into defensive blocks and repositioning. For the first time, Optimus looked like it understood rhythm and weight transfer. Tesla didn't show much use of the fingers though, the hands stayed stiff, probably because the promised 22 degree of freedom upgrade isn't ready yet. Still, for a robot that once struggled with slow, jerky steps, the difference was obvious. This was a humanoid beginning to show natural timing. On the other side, Unitree took a completely different path. Their G1 video wasn't about elegance or choreography, it was about punishment. Engineers pushed, kicked, and knocked the robot down repeatedly, and it kept bouncing back again and again. They called it anti-gravity mode, which obviously isn't literal, but the results spoke for themselves. G1 anticipated the impact, shifted its weight before hitting the ground, and rolled out of the fall with almost human instinct. Every time it got knocked down, it analyzed its own movement, found balance, and stood up without any outside help. What makes that possible is how deeply Unitry has optimized body control. The G1's frame is packed with sensors, depth, cameras, lidar, and torque sensors across the joints, all feeding a control loop that predicts how to brace for impact. When a shove comes in, the controller calculates the best way to absorb it instead of trying to lock everything rigid. That's what makes the movements look organic. The robot bends its knees, spreads its legs, and stabilizes itself, just like an athlete would. This is exactly the kind of resilience factories and field operators look for. Robots fail in the real world not because of weak AI, but because of broken balance loops or lost footing. A single fall can mean human intervention, downtime, or even damage. G1's ability to take hits and self-recover in seconds is a serious engineering win. And the price, around $16,000, puts it in a category that research labs and startups can actually buy, not just watch on stage. Tesla's vision is different. Elon Musk wants thousands of Optimus robots working inside Tesla factories by the end of 2025. He's talked about building 5,000 units for internal use this year, scaling up to 10 or 12,000 worth of parts, and hitting 50,000 next year. If they manage even a fraction of that, the economies of scale could drop costs fast. A factory robot army trained through motion capture and AI simulation sounds wild, but Tesla already builds cars in volumes that force cost curves down by sheer repetition. The problem is that humanoids aren't cars. Reliability, dexterity, and safety evolve slower than production lines. Optimus is advancing fast, but it's still a carefully choreographed lab robot, not a factory veteran. Unitry doesn't have Tesla's production muscle, but it has field experience. The company already sells robot dogs that work in defense, security, and research with thousands of units deployed worldwide. They've learned how to ship, support, and patch robots in the wild. That's how G1 arrived so refined it's part of a lineage that started with robots walking in Chinese labs and ended with acrobatic machines performing at national festivals. The engineers test by breaking things, literally, and then harden the hardware until it survives. That's not glamorous, but it's how robots grow up. There's also a darker angle that appeared recently. Security researchers discovered a serious Bluetooth flaw in unitary robots that allowed hackers to gain root access and even infect other robots within range. 
It's a nightmare scenario. One compromised unit scanning and hijacking nearby ones, forming a walking botnet. On top of that, G1 was found to be sending telemetry back to servers in China every few minutes. The company said updates are on the way and promised better security practices, but this incident raised real concerns about trust. When a robot can walk, see, and connect to the internet, the line between useful and risky gets blurry fast. Still, security problems can be patched, core physics can't. And on that front, G1 currently looks stronger. The way it handles falls, how it absorbs impact, how fast it recovers, those are the things that make a robot useful in unpredictable environments. Tesla's Optimus is showing more coordination than ever, but it still moves like a system trained for demonstration rather than disruption. The G1 looks like it's ready for the floor. Underneath these individual wins, there's a bigger global rivalry taking shape. This isn't just about two robots showing off tricks, it's about two national ecosystems racing to own the future of robotics. Tesla represents America's hardware-software hybrid model, vertically integrated, closed ecosystem built around AI as the control core. Unitree represents Chinese open, fast, iterating, cost-driven model, flood the market, gather feedback, fix fast, ship again. Both are valid. The difference is speed and tolerance for imperfection. China iterates in public, the US polishes in private. One grows through chaos, the other through refinement. And it's not just Tesla versus Unitree anymore. Meta has entered the game with its Metabot, built on an open AI platform that aims to serve as the universal brain for any robot. Amazon's Frontier AI research team is experimenting with a framework called Omni Retarget that lets humanoids copy human movements from a few video demonstrations, no long programming cycles required. They even trained a Unitree G1 to perform parkour and carry boxes across uneven terrain after watching a handful of human examples. In that sense, G1 is already becoming a favorite test bed for multiple labs. Its hardware is flexible, its software stack open enough to experiment, and its body durable enough to survive repeated training. Tesla still holds an edge in vision and integration. The Optimus project is built on top of Tesla's entire AI ecosystem, the same backbone that trains its autonomous cars, the cameras, the computer vision, the reinforcement loops. They're all part of the same pipeline. When that ecosystem matures, it could give Optimus a massive advantage in perception and planning. Imagine factory robots running on the same data infrastructure that drives millions of vehicles. The potential scale of that is staggering. Yet there's an irony. Tesla's biggest strength, its tight ecosystem, could also be its limitation. Unitree's openness and affordability are letting other companies build on top of its robots. Amazon, research universities, and smaller startups are already using G1 hardware to test AI control systems. It's becoming a platform, not just a product. If Metabot's robot brain eventually plugs into different bodies, the G1 could easily be one of the first to benefit. That's how ecosystems grow, not by owning everything, but by being everywhere. Durability and control aside, the next big challenge for both companies is hands. Dexterous manipulation is what separates a humanoid from a walking sculpture. Optimus hasn't shown it yet, and G1's demo avoided it entirely. When either of them demonstrates precise, AI-driven grasping of irregular objects, cables, tools, fragile components, that will be the moment humanoids start to feel truly useful. Right now, both are still focused on movement and stability, which makes sense, because without balance, hands mean nothing. Then there's the question of purpose. Tesla's goal is clear, automate its own production lines before selling robots externally. That ensures real-world testing and keeps failures private. Unitree's goal is broader, sell to anyone who can use them, from labs to logistics firms. It's a volume strategy. The more robots they deploy, the more feedback they collect, the faster they iterate. It's the same formula that made China dominate drone manufacturing a decade ago. In pure technical terms, both are achieving impressive milestones. Optimist demonstrates improving coordination and onboard AI decision-making, showing Tesla can deliver autonomy without external control. G1 demonstrates physical robustness, quick recovery, and cost efficiency. The difference is philosophical. 
Tesla is chasing intelligence that moves elegantly. Unitree is chasing reliability that refuses to fall. If you strip away the hype and look at practical reality, G1 seems closer to real world deployment. It's not perfect and the security concerns need fixing, but it can already perform and recover in environments that aren't staged. Tesla's Optimist still feels like a brilliant concept inching toward commercial readiness. In the long run, Tesla's scale and AI infrastructure could rewrite the entire robotics market, but right now, Unitree's simplicity, price, and resilience make it more adaptable. This whole competition also mirrors the larger industrial divide. America is building smarter robots, China is building more robots. Tesla is teaching machines to think before they move. Unitree is teaching machines to survive whatever happens after they move. It's intelligence versus instinct, design versus endurance. Both matter, but endurance tends to win the early rounds. My personal take, G1 currently feels like the stronger overall product. It's cheaper, more rugged, and already learning from real world chaos. Optimus has enormous potential and a clear technological vision yet it still operates in controlled conditions. The G1 is messy, scrappy, sometimes unstable, but that's exactly what makes it feel alive in the real world. Progress doesn't always look smooth. Sometimes it looks like a robot getting kicked and standing up again. The truth is both machines are moving the field forward in ways that make the next decade hard to predict. One side will win on intelligence, the other on iteration speed, and somewhere in the middle, they'll both change how labor, safety and autonomy are defined. The gap between demonstration and deployment is closing, and each new video makes that more obvious. For now, the scoreboard is still open. The winner might not be the one that moves best, but the one that keeps moving after it's been hit, and that, for now, is G1 Specialty. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below. Hit like if you enjoyed this breakdown, and catch you in the next one.